How are you, my fans, sneak peepers, and curious friends? I am difficult and demanding. If you want to know my real name, then hold still, and I might bring your wish to fruition. Before we begin, you can find this podcast show in iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, SoundCloud, Blueberry, Google Play Music, TuneIn, YouTube, and Stitcher. Now, unlike the other people in your life, I actually care about what you think. So meet me halfway, take a tiny moment, and give my podcast in each episode a review rating. This is the I'm Difficult and Demanding podcast, keeping it real, uncensored, and shooting straight between the eyes. The third eye, that is. I am going to hit you with explicit truth. This solo show is outrageously honest and keenly witty with a view into life. Yes, I said life. That's what we do every day when we wake up from sleeping. We are living life. Well, some of us at least. Moreover, I hope to provide you with gut-wrenching laughter and a touch of wisdom. Let's get something straight. Really, really straight. I am truly, actually, habitually, and shamelessly difficult and demanding. And I completely own it. Now, I don't ask for much because I expect and receive it all. I firmly believe that if you expect shit, you will receive shit. What does that mean? Well, it means expect nothing but the best and don't settle for less. As always, I, your host, Tara, am keeping it real and uncensored. Here we are. So let's make the most of our time. Unplug from your life and dive all into episode 29 of the I'm Difficult and Demanding podcast. Keeping it real on the ridiculous world we live in. Today's show is called Disconnected. When you see what you want to see and when you hear what you want to hear, what is that called? Well, it's called denial and it cheats you of a life that's worth living. Have you ever sat back and wondered how so many good people are tricked? There's all kinds of trickery. But its effectiveness sends chills up and down my spine and it should do the same to you. Because it's a cornerstone of sex trafficking. Before I begin, I am going to do a call out. What's a call out? Well, it's not a shout out. I am calling out you motherfucking lurkers. If you have entered my world, then be honest with yourself about it. You want to be here and you know I want you here. So follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Finally, climb aboard and enjoy the entire show because I am giving you plenty of ridiculous honesty. Once the podcast episode ends, I am keeping it going on my Instagram page at Difficult and Demanding and on my Twitter page at Mrs. D and D. Hello, everyone, and welcome back. This is the Come Into My World segment. And today I want to discuss denial. Yes, denial. It's that disease we have where we see and hear what the fuck we want to see and hear. Yes, you've ha- you have a faint idea of what I'm talking about, don't you? Denial. Yeah, you have a very faint notion of what I'm talking about. And today we are talking about denial. Why do we need it? What is it? Why can't we let it go? How long are you, me, whomever, are going to hold on to it? And what do you have to lose to snap the fuck out of your deluded world? Yes, listen to what I said. We are talking about denial. And what I ask you is what do you have to lose? In order for you to snap the fuck out of your deluded world, people are literally walking around with their metaphorical shades on. Denial is another fancy word for a lie. Yes, a lie. But it's a lie that we tell ourselves to placate and soothe. So if a lie has a good purpose, then it's okay to tell it, right? 
See, I already know you agree with what I just said in some way, shape, or form. I know you do. I know you do. You believe you are showing great compassion to yourself and others by hiding or denying what the fuck is in front of you. That's what you're doing it for, right? Or do you have another special reason of why you would choose to be in a state of denial? It's because you're this great compassionate being, right? It all makes sense. It all makes sense in that magnificent mind of yours. How do you think this dance of yours is going to end? Success or complete and utter destruction of yourself? Can you run fast? Can you run faster? Can you run harder? Can you run further? See, you'll keep running until you pass the fuck out. Because at least at that point, you are unconscious and don't have to deal with what you are running from. Where did you get this awesome plan of yours from? And is it foolproof? I mean, man, this shit will, the shit we come up with. Yeah, the shit we come up with and the shit we do because of fear, 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 fear. We are fears, bitches. (laughs) Yeah, that's what the hell you heard because that's what the hell I said. Fear, right? Fear is running us like a bunch of bitches. Yeah, it's running our asses like slaves. Fear based living enslaves you. It suffocates and stifles you. I bet you can feel it, right? Can you feel the anxiety as I talk about denial? Can you feel it now? Or you want to deny that that exists? (laughs) Yeah, I got your asses pegged. I got you pegged. You are here with me for a major dose of a reality check. Now, I don't want you to think that this is a one-sided relationship. No, it's not one-sided. My podcast is a reality check for me also. You see, I have to think very long and hard about myself. No, I just don't regurgitate shit. I do a lot, a lot of thinking. I sit down and I let my thoughts flow on paper. My podcast is a verbal journal with the sole purpose of sharing what I know. Now, I have a very old soul. So I know a lot of shit about a lot of things that I probably should not know. And guess what? Miss Boss Bitch, Difficult and Demanding, has some issues with denial. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, me and denial, we do not click. We don't click at all. I don't like it in any way, shape, or form. It doesn't work for me. Now, I know a lot of people that it does work for, but it doesn't work for me. So let me tell you this. I will be dealing with things, and I will deal with things until it's done. So by the time we are done with this episode, you better believe that denial will be dealt and done with by the end of this podcast episode. Do you hear me? I have told you guys over the last few episodes, over the last few episodes that I am done with ego-based type of living and ego-based type of decision-making. I am going or I go with my spirit, my higher self, my intuition. You see, your ego is here to serve. Yes, serve, not rule. Your spirit is in charge. Your spirit gives a direction and it's the ego's goddamn job to execute. That's the pecking order. Well, what does this have to do with denial? All of us think that we are doing things, we're doing it right, We're making shit happen, right? On one level or another, we can will things to happen and we can will things not to happen. Our ego is all powerful and all knowing. That's what they teach us. 
Well, that works up to a certain point. You see, one person can or will achieve great success and have a fuck all personal life. Another person has great love and is struggling financially. And then you have another person who has a life that's just mediocre all around. There's so many mixes, degrees, variations. There's so many of them. But here's my point. If you feel, if you feel unfulfilled in any way, shape, or form, and you are telling yourself that you are good because at least you have X, Y, or Z, that's called motherfucking denial. Do you hear me? Yeah, we have this tendency to, um, like I said earlier, we see what the fuck we want to see and we hear what the fuck we want to hear. But what's even more potent is the shit that we will tell ourselves to make ourselves okay with the state of our being, with the state of our living. That's not a life. It's fucking mute misery, right? It's some type of drug-induced haze of denial. Do you feel alive? Do you really, really feel alive? Are you feeling alive in this moment? (laughs) Well, I'm going to answer that last question for you. Of course you're feeling alive in this moment because you are listening to me. I give life. I can also suck at the fuck out of you if you cross me in the wrong goddamn way. (laughs) But for real, people will ask me about yesterday or tomorrow. And I am typically clueless to some degree about yesterday or tomorrow. Do you want to know why? It's because I am here right now with you. Yes, I am present. I am fully present with you. How many people do you spend time with? And they're checked the fuck out on some level. Some way, shape, or form, they're checked the fuck out. Why are you wasting your time with that bullshit? Huh? It's clear that if they're preoccupied, they are denying your existence on some level. And the fact that you're still fucking sitting there when that motherfucker is not giving you their full undivided attention means that you're seeing what the fuck you want to hear and what the fuck you want to see. Or did I miss? I I fucked that up completely. (laughs) Are you seeing what you want to see and hearing what you want to hear or telling yourself that it's okay? There's so many different shades and variations and and degrees of denial on the things that we will accept in our life. Yeah, I don't know why. I don't know where the fuck we get this shit from. Every single motherfucking episode I have, I keep saying, I don't know where the fuck we get this shit from. Because honestly, I don't know where the fuck we get this shit from. Life is so simple, but we've muddied it with a whole bunch of nonsense and bullshit. And I don't understand why. And maybe it's because I'm getting old and my brain misfires a lot that I'm able to have clarity. I don't know what it is, but I'm just telling you, we have a lot of unspoken bullshit that we're taught and enough is enough. Now, what I was saying, I am here with you right now, right now. I have to ask Where the fuck are you though? Because if you are not here in this moment with me, then you are currently denying yourself this perfectly great moment for us to be together. (laughs) Yes, you're denying yourself this great moment to spend time with me. Who? Me. She, that would be me, her, Tara. You're denying yourself this spectacular once a week, once in a lifetime opportunity to be with me. Now, why would you do that? You won't find another voice like this. (laughs) You won't. So relish it. Relish it. Do you hear me? So what's the definition of denial? Denial means the action of declaring something untrue, the refusal of something requested or desired, a statement That something is not true. Failure to acknowledge an unacceptable truth or emotion. 
to admit it and consciousness. So, I mean, basically, it's a defense mechanism. You are concocting some alternate goddamn reality. Now, I know denial is used for survival and extreme types of circumstances. But nowadays, it's used for any and everything. For the simplest shit we are in denial about. The simplest shit. Like shit, if we can't deal with the little shit, how the fuck are you going to deal with some big shit? Like, think about what the fuck I just said, people. If you are in denial about the tiniest shit in your life, how in the hell are you ever going to be equipped to deal with real life problems? Shit. Fuck. I mean, seriously. It's like a baby. A baby doesn't, you know, pop out the bun fucking walking and running. No, it has to learn how to control his head, his limbs, find balance, start crawling, start trying to stand up, start trying to walk and then run. But if the baby never tries and fails and learns and pivots and alters and grows, it will be a 40 year old motherfucking adult with a bobbling goddamn head and limbs are up in the goddamn air like a little ass baby. Yeah, it sounds ridiculous. It even looks even more ridiculous in my head. But you catch my point. You catch my point. How are you going to be in denial about the simple shit? Now, I want to focus on denial being used in our relationships. Why is it that so many relationships end badly? Is it really necessary? Is it necessary for each and every one of your relationships to end badly? If something is not working, why can't it end with peace? Right. If you have a flat tire on your car, do you fight with that shit to let it go? (laughs) Yeah, hell yeah. Listen to what the fuck I said. If you had a car, if you have a car, I hope you have a car. But if you don't have one, go along with me. Pretend. Pretend like I'm talking about a motherfucking bus. I don't know what the fuck you ride or drive or what you're doing, what you're hovering in the air. But just work with me. If you have a car and that car has a flat tire. Do you argue and fight with that motherfucking flat tire? Or do you make arrangements to get that shit fixed and replaced? Do you catch my point? Do you catch my, you catch my point? I know my question is absurd. It's meant to be. Why do we continue relationships longer than we should? You and I both know that that shit has met its expiration date. But y'all are still tugging along, tugging along, tugging along, saying, I think I can. I think I can. I think I can. So if you tell yourself some ego-based bullshit, yeah, ego-based bullshit to keep from facing fear, whatever that fear is, huh? That's what you're telling yourself. You're, keep, you're telling yourself some bullshit to keep yourself from facing fear. We tell ourselves excuses about the other person's behavior. We tell ourselves excuses about our own behavior. We try to quote unquote fix that shit. We try to quote unquote fix them to be better, to do better, right? We can do that. We can will that shit to happen. It's not what, what I tell you about the ego. We can make shit happen, right? But you haven't asked the person what they want or how they feel. This is what the fuck I said. Something is not working for you. And instead of seeing it for what it is and moving the hell on, you start trying to quote unquote fix the shit, meaning the person instead of the situation. And while you're fixing this person, you really haven't asked them what they want, what they desire, how they feel. Maybe they don't want to motherfucking change how they are. Maybe the only thing that needs fixing is your ass and you need to pivot and exit the fuck out. Do you feel me? But instead, We keep trying to fix the other person, right? Whoever has the stronger personality will dominate. It never dawns on us that if you feel a need to change a motherfucker, then that means that shit is not working for you. Did you hear what I said? If you feel a need to change a motherfucker, that means that that shit is not working for you. Hello, 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 motherfucking oh. Did you just hear what I said? 
You see, real love, true love will see a person, will see a person. You will really see that person. You can look them deep into their eyes and see all. And when I see all, I mean, you see all of the good, the bad, the ugly, everything. You will see it unfold right before your eyes and you will still love them. Did you hear what I said? Because you guys are not keeping the fuck up. You need to keep the fuck up of what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Love doesn't require you to change a person and true love requires the only person that needs to change. And when I say change, I mean, heal and grow would be your motherfucking ass, not the other person. So if you feel a need to rescue a motherfucker, rescue 911, a motherfucker, no, 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 no. What you need to do is rescue your goddamn ass out of that motherfucking relationship. Leave that son of a bitch for somebody else that's better suited and move the fuck on. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? You, if you love them, will accept them. And if you cannot accept them, that means you really don't motherfucking love them. Did you hear what the fuck I said? Keep up. I keep saying that. Real love means that you see the good, bad, and ugly with a person. And you can accept it. And not trying to change them, fix them, fix them, rescue them, nothing. If it works for you and you can accept them unconditionally, then you stay. But if you have a problem, then you need to go. You need to go. You need to go. Because if you can't accept it, it's not working for you. So by staying, you are in denial about the truth. You can still. You can still. Actually, you can still love a motherfucker, appreciate them, and not be with them also. So let's be clear. None of us are perfect. And we will never be. Like I said in another episode, it's not about perfection. It's about embracing the good and transforming our quote unquote bad into wisdom or insight to be a whole person, to be your whole person, right? There's no balance without light and darkness. Yes, light and darkness. There's no balance. You need them both. Both are meant to exist and not destroy you. The only thing that is destructive are your choices and false beliefs. We are beautiful roses with thorns. Yes, we have thorns. Some have more thorns than others, but that's fine. It's how it's supposed to be. If you're trying to mold someone or you're turning a blind eye and a motherfucking blind ear or deaf ear, I should say then that means you are the motherfucker with the problem. You are the person with the problem and you should leave that other person out of your bullshit. Let that person go so they can be what they need to be and you should find someone that you vibe better with. Yes, leave that motherfucker for someone else because they are probably a better match for someone else. Denial and using it is a grave disservice to the quality of your life, of my life, of our lives. So what if you made a wrong choice? What if you made a wrong choice? You're allowed to make a wrong choice. You're allowed to make a wrong choice. You learn so you can live a better life. Yeah, you learn, you get that knowledge so you can live a better life. Why stay in a state of misery and complacency? There has to be, there has to be room in your life to learn and grow and forgiveness to learn and grow. That's how you become a better person. That's how you become better to do better. Now I asked some questions at the beginning and I'm going to address some of them or all of them. Why do we need denial? I think it's because we are scared and we're living life making fear based choices. I mean, who wants to dive deep and, and make some self-aware decisions? Who wants to do that? Why self-reflect, huh? When you can just post happy pictures on Instagram and Facebook, right? If you look the part, then you can eventually become the part, right? If you look the part, you say you look the part, eventually you believe you are the part, then you will become the part, right? Well, guess what? I'm getting ready to burst your goddamn bubble. 
That's some straight up bullshit, right? That's some straight up bullshit. You work to get paid money, right? So why not do the work to live a life that is fulfilling, which will bring you greater abundance in your life? Yes, greater abundance. Now, I've just had an interesting thought about hope. You know, hope can cause you to see things very different from what it actually is. You know, hope is a feeling of a feeling of expectation, a desire for a certain thing to happen. Has hope caused you to delay a decision that was really in your best interest? Is hope a quote unquote positive form of denial? Both are centered around the fact that a situation or a person is not working for you. On one hand, you pretend it doesn't exist. On the other hand, you are wishful thinking, you know, like you're doing a fucking rain dance, a fire dance. You can make it happen, right? To change it. That's what you're doing. Either you're in complete denial about the shit or you have hope that the shit is going to change, right? Yeah. But it is not addressing hope and denial. Both are not addressing any real problems. Why do we hear and see what we want? Are we so deprived and have low expectations that we settle and get comfortable? Why are we inclined towards complacency? People are giving us every, every sign in the book. Every sign in the book. And we still stay the fuck there. Why? Why would we do that? What's so fucked up about you that you believe there's nothing or no one else besides this person? Do you know that you have options? The more you open your eyes and ears, then the more options you will have. Now, here's the catch. And I've said this before. Your options may look differently, drastically differently than what you expect, than what you hope, than what you want. But if it gives you greater joy and the chance to live your truth, then why not just go for it? When things are not faced and dealt with immediately, well, it just keeps getting bigger and bigger. The issue gets bigger and bigger. You can try and pretend with your denials. But who are you really, fu- who are you really fooling? Who are you really fooling? You're not fooling anyone. As humans, we will come up with all kinds of shit to support our decisions to stay in denial. Listen to what the hell I said. We will come up with all kinds of supporting evidence, selective evidence to support our decision to stay in denial. If you deny, if you deny, then whatever it is, it ceases to exist, right? It doesn't exist. Yeah, but nothing's going to disappear for your ass because you act like a motherfucking fool. Let, let's start there. Nothing is going to disappear because you act like you can't see shit or don't know shit. It's not going to disappear. It's not. It's right there lurking. You can feel it. You can smell it. You know it's still there. Denial cheats you of a life that is worth living. You think you're helpful using denial for yourself and others? Nah, no, I don't think so. How do you have a real relationship using denial or being with someone in a state, a constant state of denial? You can't have a real authentic connection. Yeah, all you guys are on motherfucking Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, looking for goddamn connections. What is the point of a motherfucking connection when you actually don't have the ability to connect? Listen to what the fuck I said. All these fake ass social media connections. Those are fakes. If you want a real connection, something that gives you life vibrancy, you're not going to get that shit on social media. You actually got to pick up the goddamn tools to be able to have a relationship, 
a connection with someone, which means you have to be present in a state of mind to pay attention and to connect with that motherfucker. You can't be having a a, 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 a conversation with someone and taking goddamn selfies at the same motherfucking time and think you're connecting. No, that shit is fraud. It's fake. And that's why you're always fucking bouncing from one stick to another motherfucker because you don't have real connections. And I don't even think you know how to have a motherfucking real connection. To connect, you got to make motherfucking eye contact. <laughs> And last, I heard iPhones and Androids do not have goddamn eyes. Huh? Yeah, that's what the fuck I said. Everyone's running around trying to make a motherfucking connection, but can't goddamn connect. Huh? You got all these electrical sockets around you that's waiting for you to connect with, to get supply of energy. But you got a plug and you don't know how to use the bitch. So you sit around saying, I want a connection, I want to touch, I want to feel, I want to meet someone, I want to connect. No, motherfucker, you don't want that shit. You want to be in a motherfucking state of denial. You want to act and pretend like that's what the fuck you're doing. But actually, that's not really what you want to do. Because connection requires work. And y'all lazy motherfucking asses don't want to do that much work. You'd rather just swipe left, swipe right, swipe up, swipe down. That's what the fuck you want to do. Tap that. That's what you want. Tap that shit. All that shit is not going to sustain you. And it's not real. It's not real at all. It's fraud. It's fraud bullshit. You have to be present. That means no lies, no deception, no denial to have a real connection with someone, a real authentic connection without a genuine connection. You don't have anything. That's why I said you are cheating yourself of a fulfilling life. Why do you want to be numb, numb? In your mind, heart, body, and soul. Shit, what's the point of motherfucking living? What's the point of living a goddamn life? Haven't I told y'all it's time to step out of the man-made shells of false beliefs that we're walking around with? We are taught all of these useless tools to live life. But they're not helping us live life. It doesn't help you. It doesn't help you live at all. It keeps you in a constant state of coping and tolerating. Did you hear what I said? All these useless tools that we have is teaching us to settle and to be in a constant state of coping and tolerating. That is why so many of you are getting ripped on wine every day and every goddamn night after your day. Some of you people are drinking during the motherfucking day. You're trying to resuscitate your drone of a life. Yes, you're trying to resuscitate your drone of a motherfucking life, but instead you're drowning yourself in a constant state of denial. We can do better than this. We can be better than this. And we can definitely have better than this shit. Yes, we can have better than this shit. You got to want it. If you want it, then you got to aim for that shit. Reach for that shit and grab that shit. Did you hear what the fuck I said? Did you hear what I said? We can do better than this. We can be better than this. And we can definitely have better than this. If you want it, then you've got to aim for it. You've got to reach for it. And then you've got to grab that motherfucking shit. You must stop. Stop putting the bag of your head technique. Stop with that shit. If you are a person that uses denial or, or if you are in a relationship with a person that uses denial, cut your motherfucking losses and run for the goddamn hills. Did you hear what the fuck I said? If you're using denial or you're in a relationship with a person that uses denial, that shit ain't going to work. You're wasting your goddamn time. You spending all this time and years together thinking you're building. You ain't building a motherfucking thing. You're not building anything because there's no connection. You can't connect with deception. You can't connect with fraud based bullshit. You cannot connect with ego based bullshit. There is no connection. It's just you deceiving your motherfucking self. You are in a haze and a cloud and you don't have a real goddamn relationship. Do you hear what the fuck I said? You cannot have a relationship with dishonesty, any type of dishonesty. You have to be open, vulnerable, and honest with yourself and seeing that motherfucker that you're with. You got to see it for what it is. 
You got to see for what it is. Don't waste your time and energy on a person that is living in a alternate motherfucking reality. Yes, that's what the fuck I said. An alternate reality. Don't waste your time with someone who wants to live in the motherfucking twilight zone. You will not be able to truly resolve any issues in a relationship with this person. And even if you think you have made headway on an issue, it's a goddamn hoax. It's a hoax. It's a hoax. It's a goddamn motherfucking hoax. Listen to what I said. It's a hoax. The same issues will keep popping up. And the denial, quote unquote, denial person will always have a memory of convenience. Yes, a memory of their motherfucking convenience, not yours. Get that shit straight. A memory of convenience. And their memory of convenience will always be a shield for them. Now, if you don't know anything about a shield, a shield is protection. A shield is a guard. How are you going to connect with someone's heart center when they got a motherfucking shield up? How are you going to connect with someone who their brain is disconnected and they are someplace else on their phone? How do you con- that is not a motherfucking relationship. That's a fucking placeholder. And you know, if you want a motherfucking placeholder, go buy a motherfucking big ass human sized teddy bear. You will fare better with that shit. Don't waste your time on motherfuckers who cannot have an intimate connection, mind, body, heart, and soul with you. If you found that son of a bitch, you will find another motherfucker. Do you hear me? Don't waste your time. Don't waste your life. You don't have to. Anybody who's shielding themselves, they are keeping you and them from having a truly intimate adult relationship. They will not have an adult relationship with you. You will be lonely in a motherfucking relationship. Do you hear me? Do you feel what the fuck I said? So cut your losses or keep cutting away at your goddamn happiness. Those are your choices. That's it. Cut your motherfucking losses and find your bliss or keep shaving away at your happiness. And let's see where the fuck you end up at the age of 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. Let's see what the fuck you are then. And you want to know what the fuck happened? You know what the fuck happened? You didn't listen to Tara for I'm difficult and demanding. You thought you knew better. You thought you could be better, but you found out you didn't know a motherfucking thing. Cut your losses or accept the fact that you are chiseling away at the core of your being and your own happiness. This is the end of this coming to my world segment about denial. Like I said all the time, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. And now I'm going to move over to things in the news. All right, guys, I am going to be talking about something that I read. And this article is about an airline employee that saves two young girls from an alleged sex trafficking plot. Yes, An airline employee, I believe up in Sacramento, California, bless her soul, saved two teenage girls from an alleged sex trafficking plot. So let's get started and talk about that in detail. The girls were 15 and 17 years of age, and they hoped to travel from Sacramento to New York to New York to go spend time with a man named Dre that they met on Instagram. All right, got to come on, let's get it together. A 15 year old and a 17 year old girl met a motherfucker on Instagram and he convinced them to get on a motherfucking plane to travel across the goddamn country to meet and find his ass. My shit is misfiring. It's miss motherfucking firing. It's, 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 and you know what? No, let me tell you why it's misfiring. How in the hell is this shit motherfucking possible? Like, I know that it happens. But how is it that these girls are able to put a plan together? Get to the airport unbeknownst to their parent or parents to meet a man 
that they met on motherfucking Instagram. Don't y'all know? There's no real proof about anything on social media. A motherfucker can take pictures from any place and show you whatever. And it doesn't make it true. Where do we get this shit from? Where what a person says must be true. What a person does must be true. No, it's all a motherfucking hoax. Now, there's some people where the shit is genuine. But most people are fucking, they're fucking posers and they're scamming. They're trying to show you some shit to make themselves feel more important than they motherfucking, what they really are. Their life is not that motherfucking grand. They want you to think it's grand. They want to live like a Hollywood motherfucking lifestyle. But that's not what it is. So this man named quote unquote Dre convinced two teenage girls to get to the motherfucking airport. To buy a motherfucking airplane ticket to meet his bitch ass off of Instagram. Instagram. Parents, come on now. I know you can't control everything that your child does. I know. Okay? So I'm not talking about that. But where is the relationship? Where is the connection between parent and child? Where you are integrated. You are communicating. You are discussing shit. You don't, and maybe I'm odd. I can be motherfucking off. Well, I am motherfucking off. So let's start there. So I can take that shit away from you. Look, when kids are little, that is when you have some stronger boundaries in place. And you start creating the foundation, the foundation of what this person, your child, is going to build their life upon. What their character, their spirit is going to become. You can't do that shit when they're a motherfucking teenager. You have missed the motherfucking plane. You've missed the train. And the boat has left your ass at the motherfucking dock. It's too late when they're a motherfucking teenager. And as they get older and their personality develops and you see more of who they are and who they're becoming because they're no longer saying dad, dad, mama and doing whatever the fuck you want them to do. They actually have an opinion because you're teaching them to have an opinion and be intelligent. Then the relationship between parent and child, that it, it transforms. It's an evolving thing. But if you have these strict structures of what parenthood should look like and what it should be like, then when your child becomes 15 or 17 years of age, you don't know what the fuck is going on. And again, like my coming to my world segment, you're going to be in some denial about some bullshit. And they're gonna, the child's going to tell you what the fuck you want to hear and what you want to see. You got to connect. You got to have relationships. You have to talk. You have to look out for some shit that don't look right. You have to look out for signs and samples. You can't be all up in your motherfucking glass of wine or on your motherfucking Facebook page or complaining about your motherfucking husband or your goddamn wife. No, you got to be present. That is how this shit happens because you are not on, you're not lock, stock, and ready. Your eyes have to be out there like a motherfucking owl. Ooh, ooh, ooh. You have to be watching shit. You have to be watching shit. I wish my motherfucking daughter would end up at a motherfucking airport trying to meet some motherfucker named Dre. Okay? It ain't gonna happen. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get on that motherfucking plane with her. I'm gonna snatch that motherfucker strut on his neck. That's what the fuck I'm going to do. But hey, that's neither here nor there. And uh, I'll stop with the violence. But it's just a metaphor. You catch my point? <laughs> but this is ridiculous. Before the girls had attempted to go through security or board the plane, an airline agent knew something was off by the way the two girls were interacting with one another. They were probably looking at both sides of their eye, waiting for their motherfucking parents to show up. They were ready for some shit to go down and off. They were busy texting someone on the phone and that person was giving them answers. So if an airline agent can see some shit was off with the two girls at the motherfucking airport, why weren't the parents aware that some shit was off with their motherfucking kids? Huh? Listen to what I said. If a stranger, a stranger who sees lots of people, yes, so she's probably trained to look for some shit, yes, but let's keep it real. You gave birth. You created this being. So you know that being, second best to that being knowing themselves. And you couldn't sense pick up, catch a motherfucking clue that something was off with your daughter or daughters? You didn't get a whiff of anything? Come on, guys. We got to be better. We have to do better. Life is not that motherfucking complicated. Life is actually quite pretty motherfucking simple. If you cut away all the unnecessary bullshit and you focus on what matters the most, 
the most, which is your loved ones, which is someone you created, there's no way this shit can escape you. You will be able to notice that, okay, some clothes are missing. Okay. Some stuff has been in place. Okay. Why is that backpack looking fuller than normal? It's like these little itty bitty things. That's why I was talking about my, my coming to my world segment about denial. We are in denial about so much shit. And that's why shit like this happens. You have to be in touch. You have to be in tuned with things that you value the most. You can't let that ship slip through your motherfucking fingers because they're going to slip through your motherfucking fingers and end up in another perverted motherfucker hands. That's what was going to happen here. So this stranger noticed that these two girls were interacting with each other in a weird way and they were texting. They didn't have any identification and they did not have a return flight. So where to get the motherfucking money for the plane tickets from? Huh? Where to get the money from? How did they hide hundreds of dollars? How did they hide it? Nowadays, people don't go to the motherfucking airport to buy a goddamn ticket. It's bought online. To buy it online, you have to have a goddamn credit card. Right? Right. So either they use dude's credit card or dude bought the credit card for them. Right? And you, usually when kids are up to some shit, they start behaving odd. Like an adult. When you're up to some shit, you start doing some shit that's out of the norm. Do you hear me? And you have to be very attuned and a, a, a very perceptive motherfucker like I am to pick up on the little shit. See, I pick up on shit that you don't. I pick up on a motherfucking eyelash falling off your fucking face. Do you hear what the fuck I said? I am watching and lurking what the fuck is going on. You got to be present. You have to know who was around you, what the fuck they're doing, because at any point in time, some shit can pop the fuck off and you need to be, did I say, you need to be motherfucking ready. Do you hear me? You need to be ready. You need to be ready. So they didn't have a return flight and they had no identification whatsoever. So once she, the agent, denied their tickets, good judgment, the girls headed to Starbucks to make a phone call. And while they were making the phone call, the girls at Starbucks, the agent notified the authorities and a sheriff's agent showed up shortly. The sheriff agent actually approached the girls. Okay. And started questioning them. And at that point in time, time, the girls told uh, them, the police officer, the the agent and uh, the, the sheriff, that they were talking to someone on Instagram who was asking them, to come back and take pictures, modeling pictures, and music video. Now, people, look, shit. See, this is why you need to have a relationship with your kids because they don't have the wisdom that your ass is supposed to motherfucking have. Did you hear what the fuck I said? You need to be speaking with your kids. You can have a parent relationship and you can have a friend, quote unquote, guidance type of relationship with your children because technically what you're doing is you are taking little people and you're getting little people to be big people and if you're creating fucked up little people I've said this before fucked up little people become fucked up big people so it is our job as parents to take these these like these blank slates of little people and look at who they are personality wise and give them all the tools and guidance to be the best that they can be. Not the best that you want them to motherfucking be, but the best they can be. You see, you already got your goddamn life and you need to get the fuck out of denial and start living your motherfucking life. So then you can help the little people that you created be the best that they can be so they can live their life. Your children are not here to be with you for the rest of their motherfucking lives. They are like birds. At some point in time, they are meant to fly and you are meant to let them the fuck go. Our only job is to get them ready to fly and to fly their best, their highest, their fastest, and whatever way they want to do it. They want to fly slow, let them fly slow. They want to fly low, let them fly motherfucking low. They want to fly high, let them fly motherfucking high. It has nothing to do with you. You created them. You're supposed to guide them and get them to ready, ready to be sound, mature, responsible adults. You can't do that without motherfucking conversations. You can't do that with goddamn connecting. That is why they're connecting with motherfucker pedophiles on the motherfucking social media, connecting with these sons of a bitches because the connections that they're looking for, they're not getting at home. Did you hear what the fuck I said? 
I used to be a motherfucking teenager also. And those of you who are listening to me, you probably were also. Now, like I said before, if your ass is under the age of 18 listening to me, you need to get the fuck off. Okay? Get the fuck off. Turn of age. Then come back and listen to my shit. You're not ready for my shit. This is for adults only. You have to to connect and talk and not force your shit onto others. I don't care if they are your child. They are turning into their own being, their own persona. And you have to understand and respect that. People think just because you have a child that you can basically overwhelm them, swamp them, make them become versions of you. Why the fuck they want to be a version of you if you don't even know who the fuck you are? You haven't got your shit straight. You can't deal in reality. You can't determine that you have a fraud ass motherfucking relationship and you're living in motherfucking denial. You got to lead by motherfucking example. You have to lead by example. You have to accept the fact that each one of us have a separate, different personality. You know why our personalities are different? Because our spirits are different. Our spirits are supposed to be different. And our sole purpose is to get that child where they need to be so they can live to their truest highest spiritual purpose and that is not to make up for the fuck-ups that we've made that is not to make up for the losses we made that is not to account for our heartbreak and disappointment they are not here to fulfill our motherfucking inadequacies no that's your own job do your own motherfucking work don't place that shit on the child you set your shit to the side you deal with your shit and you be the best you can be to help that child avoid situations like this If children, teenagers are feeling a need to connect with a spoof, with a ghost of a motherfucking person on Instagram, then you better believe that there's something motherfucking wrong at home. Because if that child had the love, the grounding, the soundness, the attention that they need, they don't go to a motherfucking stranger for this shit. Hello, do you hear what the fuck I said? There would be no need. There wouldn't really, there wouldn't really, quote unquote, be a way for that snake in the motherfucking grass to penetrate your family's life. You need to understand that. If you are not cultivating your goddamn gar- garden, then snakes and all other things will come in there and rob it of its beauty and its essence. And at that point in time, it was this 15 year old and 17 year old teenager. A stranger and their good luck and their fortune save them from misery. A lifetime of fucked up misery. You see, a lot of y'all may disagree with me, but I believe children are very, very smart. I believe children are sometimes smarter than adults. You know why? Because they're pure. They're pure of heart, they're pure of mind, and they're honest. And they don't have a problem with honesty. You see, when little people start having issues is when big people start putting their shit onto a child and your shit has nothing to do with that child. Take care of your shit so you can take better mental, emotional, and spiritual care of your child. Taking care of your child doesn't just extend to the basics of food, clothing, shelter, and education. There has to be wisdom imparted. There has to be upliftment imparted. There has to be, you have to be getting the next generation bigger and better than you. That means you got to do some motherfucking work to make that shit happen. You can't rely on Instagram motherfuckers named Dre to raise your goddamn child. You can't be relying on motherfucking strangers to give your child the time and attention that you motherfucking need. Because if you're not giving it as humans, we're going to get it from someplace. And nine times out of 10, if you're searching for some shit in the wrong goddamn place because you're supposed to be getting at home, the child is going to end up fucked up in a fucked up situation. Do you understand? Now back on topic, the girls told them they were talking to someone on Instagram who was asking them to come back and take pictures, modeling pictures and music videos. They got a, they got millions of people in motherfucking New York state. Why he has to find someone from motherfucking Sacramento, huh? Why is someone from Sacramento got to come all the way to New York to take some modeling pictures? You see, if you're having a conversation, you could explain to your child that shit. You should have told them that shit didn't make any sense, but you're not talking. You're fucking swiping. You're fucking taking happy Instagram photos. Stop that shit and start dealing with real people. This is typically a ruse, the ruse that is used to get minors and others involved with sex trafficking. You see, with modeling and things like that, pictures and things like music videos, it makes a person feel wanted. 
It makes them feel needed. It makes them feel loved. It makes them feel appreciated. And unfortunately, that is the wrong way for us to teach someone to get love and appreciation because you know what? They are seeking that shit from external circumstances, external people. No, no, no. Anytime you seek love, attention, adoration, respect, companionship from outside of yourself first, I can guarantee you, your shit is going to be 99.99% fucked up. You're going to meet a motherfucking loser. You're going to meet a leech, going to meet a motherfucking vampire, and they're going to be abusive. They're going to be disrespectful. And you're, you're going to fuck the person up for the rest of their lives. You have to teach people that what you seek on the outside, you got to get that shit on the inside first. Do you hear what the fuck I said? You have to teach your children. You have to teach yourself that love, respect, adoration. You got to give it to yourself first. You got to put yourself first because when you give it to yourself first, then you know what the fuck it looks like. If you go looking to another motherfucker to teach you, to train you on how to identify love and what love is, Nah, 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 that shit doesn't work because nine times out of 10, that son of a bitch doesn't know what the fuck it looks like. So you got the blind leading the blind and the stupid teaching some more stupid. Did you hear what the fuck I said? I know it's offensive, but that's the only way to put it because when you are putting yourself out there to predators and they're taking away the essence of your purity, your honesty, your goodness, they're taking advantage of you, then you know what? I got to call a spade a motherfucking spade. And if you listen to my motherfucking podcast, podcast, you know how I roll. It's okay to know. And it's okay to not know what love looks like. But the best person to fucking experiment with is yourself. Don't seek that shit from anybody else. Give it to yourself first. Matter of fact, what you do, first thing you motherfucking do, listen to Tara from I'm Difficult Demanding. You go buy a motherfucking dictionary. Do you hear me? Google the shit. Call Siri motherfucking ring Alexa. Do you understand? You ask those motherfuckers, what is the definition of love? What is the definition of respect? What is the definition of friendship? Then once you get that definition, then you start coming up with a plan to do those things for yourself. And that is how you learn how or what it is. Because if it hurts, it's wrong. It's not right. Because it's not supposed to motherfucking hurt. Do you hear me? Don't go looking for, to other people to teach you some shit that you don't know. It's okay not to know. And it's even more okay to do the research on your own. But anytime you go hooking up with someone who, who appears to be nice, who appears to be something, I can guarantee you that motherfucker is not it. They're not it. Because if they were a real true person, they would tell you, you know what? No, 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 sweetheart. You need to go home and you need to focus on X, Y, and Z. Don't do this. This is not going to get you what you need. That's what real genuine people do. People are trying to use your ass. They want to get you on fucking music videos and taking fucking photos. Like they can't find anyone on the fucking East Coast. The girls were hesitant. Huh? This is the shit. The girls were hesitant to believe that they were possibly going to be involved in a sex trafficking case. Now, how does this motherfucker named Dre convince a 15 year old and 70 year old to have such a trust in a man they have never motherfucking met do you hear what the fuck i just said these girls were less inclined to believe a police officer who is supposed to serve and protect they were less inclined to be believe him and they were more inclined to believe a motherfucker who's probably promising a modeling and music video career now how in the hell does some shit like that happen I'm telling you, something's not right in the goddamn house. Something is not right in the house. When you have an inability to believe a person whose job is typically to serve and protect, have integrity and honesty, typically most cops are good. And, a, and if teenage girls are less inclined to believe that and they want to believe a motherfucker with a cool ass name like Dre, all oh, the fundamentals are wrong, people. The fucking basic fundamentals are goddamn wrong. It's wrong. It's wrong. It's wrong. It's wrong. You got a man in front of you trying to save your goddamn life and your ass at the same, same time. 
and I meant ass literally, save her life and her motherfucking ass at the same goddamn time. And these two teenage girls did not want to believe the police officer. They want to believe a motherfucker named Dre from Instagram. That shit is whack. It's off. Hello, people. Unacceptable. Unacceptable. Do you? Yeah, I sound like a ranting, raving fool because you know what? I am a ranting, raving fool. I'm telling you, it's wrong. When the fundamentals are right, there's no need to go seek off your motherfucking lawn off your, when the fundamentals are right. We are so emotionally and mentally inept and in denial ill-equipped, unprepared for life that we start off at an early age getting played, manipulated, used, and abused by motherfuckers like, who are predators. And that can't be the case. We got to fix our own shit so we can help our kids be better and not believe fucking losers named Dre. They said that they wouldn't have, if they, if they let them on a plane, that they would not have become victims. See, that's how they don't know. That's how, how did, what, what do you think these girls' plans were? Huh? How are they going to avoid becoming the victim? They don't even understand what the fuck sex, in, sex trafficking is. That's what the funny thing is. They think that, oh, life is great. I'm an American citizen. I am protected. I'll be fine. I can always use social media and someone can find me. Stupid on top of stupid on top of dumb. Huh? Yeah, that's what the fuck I said. How are you going to prevent yourself from becoming a victim? They can knock you the fuck out, kidnap your ass, bound and gag you and take you someplace. Then what you going to do? You think they're going to give you a motherfucking cell phone? Huh? By the time they finish training your ass and breaking you down, you won't even remember your motherfucking name from birth. But these girls were convinced at the age of 15 and 17 that they can handle their shit. They got their shit down. You see, they're living a life that's too fast and they're growing the fuck up too fast because someone is not there to take the fuck care of them. Someone's not talking with them. You see, with my kids, I keep it motherfucking real. Now, I don't curse like this. Sometimes I do. Most times I try not to. But hey, depending on what the topic is, I can let that shit rip because I need my kids to understand that life outside mommy and daddy's world is not rosy like this. There are people who appear to be nice who are not motherfucking nice. People have all these many faces they like to show just to get some shit from you. So I keep that shit real. I keep it 100 with my kids. My goal with my children is to teach them how to make decisions that are self-honoring and respectful and truthful. I tell my kids, you know what? If you're going to do some shit, be honest about it. If you're going to do some shit that you know you're not supposed to be supposed to be doing and you get asked about it, say, yeah, I did it. It was wrong. I did it. And I wanted to because that's what I'm teaching my kids to do. Make a decision. Stand by that shit. If it was a wrong motherfucking decision, own that shit, too. And choose to learn from it. If you don't want to learn from it, then you better have a motherfucking reason for me of why you want to learn from it. Don't go doing shit that you don't know why the fuck you did it. Did you hear what the fuck I said? A lot of people make decisions and they don't know why the fuck they're doing what they're doing. Huh? How does that make any motherfucking sense? Are you hungry? Yeah. Did you eat? Yeah. Why did you eat? I ate because I was hungry. You got to have a fucking answer for why you're doing the fuck you're doing. Otherwise, you're going through life like a motherfucking robot. What do we need to do? What do we need to, to achieve to get y'all to understand that you have to connect? You have to connect with the most important people in your life. You have to let them know that people aren't always what they seem. And even when a motherfucker is what they seem, they could change at a later point in time. How do you think sex trafficking exists? How do you think slavery exists? Because people are getting fooled. They're not prepared. The sheriff, the sheriff told them that they would not have had a choice. Yeah. These girls thought they had a motherfucking choice. They had a one-way ticket. <laughs> no IDs. No IDs. You know why they didn't have an ID? Because either he told them not to motherfucking bring it or they didn't have one. And when you don't have identification... That means you can become whatever the fuck they want you to be. Whoever, whatever, and when the fuck ever. No identification. No one knew. No plane ticket. All they had is their motherfucking iPhone. And they thought that that's going to sit in their Instagram motherfucking page or their Snapchat page. And that was going to rescue them. Huh? 
They're going to send an emergency SOS through fucking Snapchat. Okay, so, so what? You send an SOS through Snapchat. By the time he finished fucking knocking you the fuck out, gagging you, changing motherfucking locations, you are a missing person. You cease to exist. You are a figment of your own goddamn imagination. Yeah, that's what sex trafficking is about. They cease to erase you. They give your whole being a goddamn lobotomy. You use your toss like a piece of motherfucking trash. The sheriff eventually got in touch with Dre. But shortly thereafter, he deleted all of his social media profiles. Surprise, surprise. Surprise, surprise. Okay? Surprise, surprise. The girls were re- reunited with their parents who were under the impression their daughters were spending the night at a friend's house. So, you think your child is spending the night at a friend's house. Do you check to see how they're doing? Do you FaceTime their ass to make sure that the, the environment that they're in matches? No, you can't track people 24-7. You got to have some level of trust. But I believe you got to trust and motherfucking verify. Do you understand and feel me? See, I'm the type of mama I will pop up with some prize pizza like, hey, y'all, I brought you some pizza. You know, they won't even know that I'm undercover. I'm an undercover mother. That's what the fuck I am. I'm an undercover mother. I trust, but I goddamn verify. You see, we can't be out here trusting motherfucking blindly, especially with teenagers. They're in between a kid and becoming an adult. They think they know some shit, but they really don't know what the fuck they're doing. And you got to give them seeds of wisdom to help them move along. And then you got to trust, but verify, right? You show up with with some shit that they love. So they don't even know. They think, oh, your mom is so cool. She went out of her way. She brought us pizza. And my daughter like, yeah, I know my mama. But yeah, she's so cool. She's fun. So that's all right. You got to have a relationship with like, like that, guys. You got to have a relationship. And if you don't know how to have a relationship, you got to figure that shit out. You really got to figure that shit out. Social media is wonderful. It's great. But it cannot replace that good old fashioned one-on-one human interaction and connection. There's too many people being harmed in so many different ways because we're being tricked. Now, let me tell you some real shit. People contact me on social media all the time. What? Hello. How are you? Hello. How am I? I'm fucking fine. Why why, why are you asking me some stupid ass shit? Hello, am I? How the fuck you think I am? Motherfucker, if my social media page, my Instagram page has caught your goddamn attention, what that means, bitch, is that means I'm fine and I'm doing goddamn well. And what the fuck do you want? Don't come to me asking me some stupid ass shit like hi. Hi. Bye, bitch. Bye. That's what the fuck I said. Don't ask me how the fuck I'm doing. I'm doing motherfucking fine. That's why you're trying to contact me. We can't fall for that stupid ass shit. Hello, how are you? How the fuck are you, bitch? Why the fuck are you talking to me? Yes, I know I sound crazy. You people think I'm mean and rude, but no, you don't understand. There's people who have like, they can sniff. They can sniff out your fucking issues and they come pretending to be nice, telling you hello, have a good day. It's all a motherfucking fraud. It's a hoax. You see, if somebody really wants something from you, they'll tell you what that shit is up front. I don't waste my time with stupid ass shit. Hi, how are you? Sending me motherfucking heart. Why the fuck you sending me your heart? Bitch, send me a real motherfucking heart. You want to send me a motherfucking emoji heart? No, cut your shit out your chest and send me that shit. Because if you cut it out your chest, then I know you're motherfucking for real. You'll be dead at the same goddamn time. Then I know you're motherfucking real. Don't send me no motherfucking heart emojis. Do you feel me? Don't send me no motherfucking happy faces. Fuck that shit. Fuck that shit. I ain't got time for those stupid ass shit. You're playing games. You're trying to dupe. You're trying to see, is this motherfucker a person with low self-esteem, low self-worth? No, motherfucker. You're the person with the low self-esteem, low self-worth. Because you wouldn't be sending me bitch, weak-ass motherfucking messages like that. Do you understand? Someone tells me hi, I say hi. You tell me how are you, I say I'm fine. You see, typically what we do is we get caught up in niceness. Someone says, how are you? I say, I'm fine. Then you say, how are you? They say, I'm fine. Then you start these stupid ass conversations and all they're trying to do is solicit information from you so they can use that shit to manipulate you more. You got to get with the game, fucking people. You're in a fucking game. You got to learn the rules and you got to play that shit. Do you understand? You got to play that shit. You got to learn how people operate. You have to understand why is this motherfucker coming out of the blue approaching me? 
Oh, he thinks you're fine. Yeah, motherfucker. I am fine. Now what? What, what, what? Tell me some shit I don't know. Do you understand? Don't let motherfuckers get into you, get inside your motherfucking house. That's a metaphor. Don't let any motherfucker get into your house with fucking compliments. I created another episode about motherfuckers giving compliments. You want to send me a heart? Send me your real heart, motherfucker. Send me a real motherfucking heart. Show me that bitch that's pump, 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 bleeding. If you ain't got no pump, 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 bleeding, get the fuck out of my face. I don't have time for fucking bullshit. I don't have time for weak, cowardly, manipulative motherfuckers who are coming to me with some bullshit. Because that's how they prey upon kids. That's how they prey upon elderly. That's how they prey upon people. And if you can't tell, I got a motherfucking problem with predators. I like to slaughter motherfuckers who are playing games. Let me see. Let me tell you something about me. Don't lie to me. Don't play mind games with me. Don't disrespect me and don't motherfucking cheat on me. Those are my four goddamn tenants. If you follow those rules, we're pretty much cool. If you fuck with that shit, I'm going to fuck your shit up. I'm going to slaughter and toss your motherfucking ass and you will cease to goddamn exist for me. I don't play games. I shoot straight. I shoot straight between the motherfucking eyes and I shoot very pretty fast. I try not to do shoot at all. I try not to do it all the time, but if I have to, I will call bullshit as I see it. Stop being manipulated and played. It's okay if someone says hi, it's okay for you to say hi back, but you need to be on point. You need to be aware and you need to try to gauge and understand what is this person's motive? What is their intention? Usually people like that, they fade from the sunset very fast because people like that, they can't deal with the challenge. They like easy shit. They like people who are lonely and they say hi and they pique this person's interest and they get you to tell all your information. See, that's how Dre got to these girls. He could look at their photos and tell what they were doing and gauge what they're missing in their life. And that is why he targeted them. You see, they say a picture's worth a thousand words. A picture's worth more than that. So you need to be very careful on what the fuck you're posting. You need to be very careful on what you're posting. You need to be very careful on what you're sharing because there's a lot of people. They don't mean you well. They mean to use you to serve their purposes and then they will drop your ass like a fucking hot potato. Do you understand? And you are divine treasure and you need to see yourself as that and you need to treat yourself as that. You can't let everyone come into your life. You cannot, you cannot, and you should not. And you need to teach your children to use discretion and teach your kids how to make decisions and how to look at things from top down all around different angles, because that will help them as an adult. Now, these teenage girls, if their mother and their father do not help them learn from this situation, besides just punishing them, these young ladies will become adults and they will continue to be preyed upon, preyed upon and played by two bit weak snake ass motherfuckers. When you're dealing with humans, it's a game of life and you have to determine which game you're playing at what point in time and you have to learn and know those rules of the game. And if you're not equipped to play the fucking game, you will become a victim over and over again. You have to stand up for yourself so you can teach others how to stand up for themselves. And all this starts from love. It starts from love and basic human interaction and connections and having conversations cannot have a fucking relationship with your child on social media you have to turn the fuck around put the phone goddamn down look them in their fucking eyes and see their soul and relate to them talk to them make them feel heard loved respected and understood and valued value is like one of the most important things on this earth so that when people come and try to slide in their fucking DM, your kids will be smart enough to say, hey, mom, hey, dad, what you think about this? And you can say, hey, sweetheart, this is what it is. This is how you handle it. And this is what you should do. And your child will be more inclined to listen to you because they trust you because you trust them. You respect them. So they respect you. And they know that they have unconditional love and support from you, no matter what mistakes they make, because you will help them learn, grow and pivot from all their mishaps. Are you disappointed this has come to an end? Well, it doesn't have to reach out and let me know what you think about this episode and my podcast. You can try and slide into my DM. 
but I will kick your ass out. So I suggest you hop into my DM on Instagram at Difficult and Demanding or Twitter at Mrs. D and D. Or leave a comment on one of my posts. Now give, give, give. My episode links to friends, family, associates, frenemies. Hell, give it to your enemies. Actually, I don't give a damn who you give it to. Just give the shit to people and bring laughter to others and show your love for this podcast. Let me tell you a secret. I love listening to my voice. How about you? Well, if you love it just as much as I do, then episode 30 will be here on June 15th, 2018 from the I'm Difficult and Demanding podcast. Keeping it real on the ridiculous world we live in. It's important to have balance in life. Can't have all work and no play. So visit my Instagram page at Difficult and Demanding and my Twitter page at Mrs. D and D. 